Okay. It is six o'clock. Hi, everybody. Oh, okay. I'll make this smaller. You want to make sure that they can hear us from home? Yes. Can everyone hear us? Could you respond in the chat or you could give me a thumbs up? Yes. Okay. okay. I have thumbs up and positives. Cool. All right. So we're just going to jump into it so you guys can go home and, or start dinner, all those good things. Um, so it's just an informational meeting tonight. We're going to cover um, just a whole bunch of information. And at the end, we'll open up to questions. But just kind of what you can expect. Um, you're in the chat on the thing. Mm -hmm. okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just what you can expect at um, Slide Park and then what you can expect from, from us as teachers and then the teachers up there. So we're going to camp uh, April 8th to April 12th. Slide Park is up in Pollock Pines, which is just at Highway 50. Well, maybe, yeah, there we go. So this is the address we're going to be at. And the website is a SCOE website because SCOE runs it. And that's a um, just the County Office of Education. Uh, so I encourage you to go to the website. There's a lot of parent resources on there as well as student resources. And then everything the chaperones receive, you'll see on that website as well. Okay, so the way that camp works is on that Monday, kids will arrive to school no later than nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, please don't be late because the buses we have to, uh, we have a pretty strict time schedule with Slide Park, so we need to leave fairly quickly. Um, but we are going to load the buses with our luggage and our students, and we take off up the hill to Slide Park. Um, once we arrive at the Slide Park campus, students will do kind of an orientation. They'll move into their cabins and they'll be fed lunch. Um, and then in the afternoon, um, they meet with the Slide Park principal, and then they have their class to start. So it's a really busy schedule. Kids are up by seven, um, bedtime. They're usually in their cabins and um, asleep in the evenings by like 9.30 um, and all day long is, is packed. So um, breakfast, then they do cabin cleanup, but go on a hike or have a classroom activity. They get a break, which is like they're called their rec time. Um, they get lunch um, and then they go right back into activities and hiking. And then they'll do more rec time and then dinner. We always have a class meeting that's led by Ms. Y and myself. Then they fall into their evening program, which are different types of activities like skits or um, relay races. Um, we do a big tug of, tug of war game. And then there's another evening activity. Usually it's a rally. Um, sometimes they go hiking in the evening at night. And then it's bedtime. Um, so getting ready for bed, we give the kids a cookie before bed. And then they're out. They go to they go to sleep, and they're tired. It's busy. And when we're returning on departure day, just kind of keep dojo open because I'll let you guys know time of arrival coming back. As soon as we arrive back on campus, you guys can take your kids home uh, for the day. So or they'll, usually we're home by about twelve twelve thirty. Uh, sorry, about one one thirty. So just keep that in mind that on dojo I'll send you home our, our ETA. So at Slide Park, there's eight student cabins. There are four cabins for male students and four cabins for female students. They are separated by a large like pathway. So um, boys are on one side, girls are on the other. Each um, cabin's about 30 students. And then there's about three to four chaperones. It's one to three up there, but we tend to bring more chaperones. So I think we might have four per cabin when we're up there. Cabins are heated, so kids can plan on being warm at night. They don't have to worry about being freezing. Um, they're bunk bed style, so everyone will have a bunk, top or bottom. And then there's bathrooms with sinks, toilets, and private showers that sit in the middle of the building. Um, students do need to bring a sleeping bag and bring a pillow. If you don't have a sleeping bag, you don't need to buy one. It's their twin bed, so twin sheets work and lots of blankets and pillows work. When you send that stuff to school, um, your bedding, please make sure it's labeled. And if you don't have a garbage bag, we have one, but we'll bag it all tie it up, put your student's name on it so it's easy to transport back and forth. Um, so we have eight parents that are volunteered for us. They're all fingerprinted. Um, and so they'll be in the cabins with the kids. Um, they have a private little like room. It's basically a closet that they sleep in. And then the students sleep in their larger rooms on the outside. Um, the leaders are there to uh, supervise the kids during rec time and in the evenings. Um, and then they're also there to help on with teachers, Slide Park teachers on the activities. They can go hiking with the kids. Um, and so they're pretty much there all day. It's a, it's a big job to be a Slide Park um, chaperone. Um, 
the cabin leaders are in direct, under direct supervision of the Sci Park staff, and so when and Miss Y and myself, um, and so when they get there, they will have an orientation themselves. Um, it'll cover safety. It'll cover um, just kind of the rules of Sly Park so they can help keep things enforced and safe for the kids. Um, so the bus this year is very strict on suitcases. I've already gotten like two emails about it. Kids cannot bring gigantic suitcases. They can bring a carry-on size suitcase or a duffel bag, and then they'll have their bag with um, bedding. But they don't want gigantic suitcases. They can't fit them underneath the retrofitted buses, so they won't fit on the bus. Um, so small, a carry-on size suitcase or a duffel bag for packing. Everyone needs to bring a raincoat. It does rain up there. Um, even though we're going into April, there's a chance of showers always, so bring a raincoat. Um, comfortable clothing, so you're thinking layers. So it's because we are going into spring, it'll be cold in the mornings and cold in the evenings, but it'll be nice during the day. So kids should have layers, t-shirt, sweatshirt to go over it, a jacket, pants. Um, I could, you could say a pair of shorts, but I would stick to pants because if you're hiking, um, it's just a little bit safer if you were to stumble and fall, you don't want to skin your legs up. So I would say pants. Um, we shouldn't need snow boots. Um, we shouldn't need rubber boots. Don't go buy things for Sly Park. If tennis shoes are great, I say always bring a second pair of tennis shoes just in case your shoes get wet. We do cross some creeks when we're hiking. So have two pairs of shoes. Extra socks are like really important because no one wants wet feet. And then Sly Park actually has a closet of materials that we can borrow. So if kids need uh, sturdier shoes or they need a raincoat and there's this like gone missing or whatever, we have stuff that we can pull from as well. Um, and then we have the opportunity to do silk screening at Sly Park. So sending a pillowcase, something light, a light colored t-shirt, a pillowcase, a bag, and they do silk screen. It's really fun. So have something that they can silk screen. Okay, so this is kind of new this year. In the past at Sly Park, you used to be able to go online and approve over-the-counter medications that Sly Park would administer to your students if they had, say, a headache, um, maybe like menstrual cramps. They do not allow that anymore. So if your child needs any kind of medication, I mean, tons for like indigestion, anything, uh, Tylenol, Motrin, um, allergy medicine, any kind of just prescription medicine that your children take, it has to come with a doctor's note. If we don't have a doctor's note, we can't authorize giving it to them, so they won't be able to. Um, medication um, should not be sent in your child's bag. When we check in on that morning, it needs to come directly to me. We log it in a log, and we keep it in a case that's locked up at Sly Park. And so um, the only ones that will have access to that medication are the teachers. And then when we administer medication, everything is logged um, by time and uh, date, so we know what we gave um, and to who we gave it to. So it's really important that you don't send any medicine in your children's bags. They all need to come directly to me. Um, and that's any medication, anything over the counter. Um, so sometimes kids do, oh, sorry, one more thing. Medicine should come in the original package. Don't bring me a bag of like white pills. <laughs> they need to come in the prescription bottle with the prescription on it, or if it's Tylenol in the Tylenol bottle, um, don't give me like a hodgepodge of medicine. It has to come like clearly labeled so that we can um, administer it correctly. Um, and only Ms. Y and I will be giving the kids medication while we're up there. Oh, okay. Yes. Sorry. 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 <laughs> I was like, this one. Okay. There's basic first aid supplies up there. So we have band-aids and all that good stuff. Slide Park offers that for us. Um, mild injuries will go to the first aid station. And um, at Sly Park, they do have like a sick bay um, where kids can go in to be treated for minor illnesses. Um, but if there's a major injury, they're going to call 911 immediately. Um, if someone gets sick at Sly Park, we'll contact you and let you know, and then we can kind of work out a plan. Um, I have had students become ill before. Um, if they do have something that is like contagious, they come down and stay with the teachers and the sick bay until someone can come pick them up. Um, and it's just like the regular cabin bunk rooms, they're just a little bit smaller. So they'll have a bunk bed and clean sheets and they can kind of hang out there until they feel better. So if they come down with a fever or anything like that, um, we have a place for them to go for you to come pick them up. If you have a student that has special dietary needs, so you're vegan, you're vegetarian, you don't eat pork, uh, your child's allergic to eggs, any of those things, uh, you need to let the slide part kitchen know. And I would say, let them know by tomorrow. Um, so I, this information came out a few, almost a month ago. So um, it's been out there, but if you have anything, give them an email. 
your name, the dates of our trip, and please let them know what your child can or cannot eat. They're pretty fantastic about um, providing other options. They'll have a vegetarian option for students. They've done vegan options. They're really good, but you have to let them know. If anyone has an allergy, I ask that you just let me know individually. You can send me a dojo. Um, so maybe it's, it's, a, it's not a nut-free campus. None of the food the kids have will have nuts in it, um, but the adults on campus, maybe like a side part teacher might have something in their backpack. So I'm not saying it's a nut-free campus, but I am saying that the cafeteria is not going to serve your kids nuts. But if you have an allergy, let me know just so that we can be extra cautious. We don't want anyone to get sick. So if your child can't eat citrus, please let us know. If they don't do milk, please let us know, just so that Ms. Y and I are aware. And then when you email the head cook, if you could CC both of us on it, oh, yeah, just because we're so we're aware of it. But if you've already done it, don't worry about oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so behavior expectations, it is a school. Um, they are their own entity. So we do follow the school rules while at Sly Park. Those expectations will be set. Well, they're already being set. We've been having a lot of meetings about Sly Park together as groups. Um, but when we get there, they'll be set um, pretty clearly by the Sly Park principal. Um, we ask that students are responsible and they're considerate. We will be on campus with students who are not from David Lubin. So there'll be two other school sites there with us. And so it's just making sure that we are being our best selves and being good, um, good David Lubin students that are just being responsible and kind. Um, if you don't follow slide park rules, you will uh, be result, um, the result will be sent, being sent home. And so usually what happens is the principal from up there will meet with your students, uh, kind of figure out what happened, and then they'll give you guys a call. And it's never fun to have to drive up in the middle of the night to pick up your students. So uh, we just really expect that they're just using their best manners while we're there and being respectful. And I've talked to the kids about it. They, um, I think they're all on board and, and I don't expect any any issues, but no. just do know that if there's a behavior problem, they will come get you. you. You will have to come get your child. So contacting students. Um, Slide Park does not, so the big thing about like, homesickness is the more you're talking to your child while they're away, the more their homesickness grows. And so kids do get homesick while they're there. And so it's really important that we try to encourage the kids to stay at Sly Park and enjoy the entire experience. It's definitely a growing experience for kids this age. Some students have never been away from home, so others have. So it's just a kind of a wide range of experiences. Um, but with that said, um, there are no absolutely no cell phones at Sly Park. So your child can check them um, out with you. Like if you get to school, they can give it to you. You can take it home. Um, but they should not have them in their cabins. It's also a privacy issue because we don't want students photographing other students, especially in a living situation. So there just should not be any cell phones. Yeah, no social media. It, no social media. Um, and then it, it also goes for like smartwatches and things. Um, mm -hmm. Your child really doesn't need a smartwatch at Sly Park. If there is an emergency, you can call the Sly Park office. That number is available. You can call my cell phone. I will have it on me all the time. Um, I'll and, be checking JoJo. And I we'll check, check JoJo, JoJo as well. Yeah. So you can reach us any anytime. It could be midnight, you can call me. Um, so if you really need to talk to your child, just let us know and we will make sure that we can get them available for you. Um, if you wanna send your kids care packages like student mail, um, you can totally do that. Um, you just put your child's name and your school on there and then you send it up. I will let you guys know that mail delivery doesn't usually start until Wednesday night um, just to discourage homesickness because sometimes when those letters get open, the tears come. And so we do try to keep them towards the end of the week just to be like, just a couple more days and you guys are going to be going home to see your families um, because we do get a little sad sometimes when we're not with our mom and we're reading a note from them. <laughs> so, Aww. But do send mail, it's fun. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, I have some uh, questions. Yeah. Let's so what see. are some questions? Um, what about topical stuff they administer at home by themselves anyway? I think that's about the meds. I would say topical like anti-itch cream I would say I think if yes, it's exactly in yeah, your that's bag fine. that's probably fine I would say it's more like um like medications that like you you take orally I would yeah, say yeah yeah you ingest um will there be no contact from our students the whole week no contact the whole week but if you want them to mail you a letter, you can send some envelopes or postcards and some paper and stamps. There's a post box there and mail goes out every day so they can send you a letter. 
And again, if you are missing them terribly, um, send me a note and I'm happy to go snap a picture of them and send it to you via text. <laughs> okay. Um, can you show the mailing address again, please? Yes, we can. Let's see. Oh, this one. Here we go. If you want, also, you could ha um, send a letter to school with me and we could just hold on to it until yeah, we go as well. So then you don't have to worry about it getting there on time. We won't say it's from you. And then if you have like a we'll student that maybe um, bed wets, because that still happens, or sleepwalks, um, just let Miss Y and I know privately. Um, then we can just kind of let their chaperones know to be aware of those things. If someone were to have an accident um, at Sly Park, um, their, Sly Park is amazing. Um, that you just let your chaperone know if something happened and then the chaperone takes care of it privately when you're not there and there's no students in the cabin. And really what happens is the Sly Park staff come down, they will launder everything and have it returned before students even come back on campus. So it's very, very quiet because uh, things do happen, especially in new environments. Water is heavily encouraged to just drink tons and tons of water because kids um, get dehydrated very easily. And so when you're drinking a lot of water and your body's not going to be used to like drinking bottle by, you know, bottles, sometimes things can happen. So, um, and the other thing we've talked about it here at school is just encouraging your student. I know bathrooms are really hard to use in a public setting, but encouraging your bath, your students to use the bathroom regularly at slide park. Some students will hold their bowel movements until like Wednesday and then they're like so sick. Mm -hmm. um, and there's nothing really we can do other than try to find a restroom for them. So we encourage them to please try to use a bathroom. And we've talked about that with the students already. Okay, any other questions? Or any other questions here? Yeah, you guys have any questions? Uh, for the medication, there's a flexibility with the time of day. That's yeah, important. that's a great question. Yeah, so you tell me what time then you take medicine and I will make sure it happens. So um, I make will go list. and find them <laughs> hiking down the hill to make sure. Uh, yeah, whatever you guys need. If your child takes like a food with their medication, like maybe they have to eat breakfast first and um, we can accommodate that. I've gotten up early to give students medicine because they have to eat. They have to take the medicine 30 minutes before they eat. So I meet them in the cabin with their medicine. So whatever you need, you just let me know and we'll make sure it happens. Do we know yet whether um, the cabins will have just our school or whether they'll be mixed? We haven't found out yet. So we sent off the um, list to, for um, the cabin buddies. I think they picked their partners and we sent off the list for that. And then Slide Park will return to us the cabin assignments and then we can kind of make some small adjustments, um, but we don't know yet. And we may not know until the week before we go. And that's another thing too, the third, the Friday before we go to camp, we'll have a big sixth grade meeting and that's the day that students will learn who their partners are. Um, so we will do it the Friday before. Um, are snacks permitted? No, great question. Absolutely no food. Please do not send any food with your student. Um, one is that they don't allow food in the cabins because of rodents <laughs> um, and bugs. The, the <laughs> cabins are really clean and they keep them super clean and there's no pests in them. So we, they will not, no food at all. Also, they feed the kids a lot of food. So food is, um, there's always an all you can eat bar. The bar in the morning is like yogurt and fruit and milk and um, cold cereal, all you can eat. And then there's a hot meal as well. And then they have a milk bar where you can just drink like all the milk you want. And then, <laughs> and then lunch, lunch is usually a main course of like something pretty hearty. And then again, all you can eat salad bar. Um, and it's like, yes. And there's always some fruit to go with it and lots of vegetables. And then dinner is the same. Dinner always comes with some great dessert, plus the dinner, plus the all you can eat salad bar, plus the bread. Plus, there's just so much food. Plus a, a cookie but if, and if a cookie before, before bed, yeah. <laughs> they don't need any. Oh, and then if you're like on the five mile hike, they bring a snack for you. They'll give you like either cheese sticks or like Fritos, like they feed you. So- is that they, the hike around Jenkinson? The hike is to Lake Jenkinson. So they'll do a five mile out to it and then back. It's like two and a half out and two and a half back. And then they'll hike down to a creek one day and back. Um, yeah. And if you're really worried about snacks, they can always come talk to us about it. Yes, I we can we, we can squirrel up something. We can find like an apple yeah. or something. Yeah. And um send all of your students with a reusable water bottle. They don't have um like one use bottles, everything's reusable. So 
they have water filling stations, but kids have to bring a bottle. Um, and if you forget, they have like a lending station, but usually the bottles left by other students. So they're clean, but bring your own bottle. Probably with their name on it, right? Yeah, labeled name. I usually the kids know. Um, I was telling the kids too, they want a light backpack. You don't need a humongous backpack, but something light that they can carry their water bottle in during the day. And then they can put their sweatshirts in as they're like stripping off layers um, because they carry their own stuff. I'm not carrying anything for them. Yeah, me neither. The slide hard teachers definitely are not. Usually they can convince a friend to carry it for a little bit until the friend realizes this is too much. So you're in charge of your own stuff. So a small light backpack is good to keep your things in. Okay, let's see here. Uh, can you please re repeat the amount of kids per cabin? I heard 30 per entire cabin, but how many per room? Um, per room, it's like eight per room. So the, so the cabins are like, imagine like a gigantic, like rectangular building. And then inside the building, they're split, they're split into four, like it's a quad. So four smallish rooms. Um, and then in those rooms, there's eight bunk beds, usually in each room. So, um, they try to keep it like six to seven, but sometimes I'll bring a cot in to accommodate an additional student. And then in that, there's a little closet. It's literally a closet that's on the way to the door where the chaperones sleep. And then there's a restroom that's in the middle of the whole pod. Um, and so um, there's plenty of room. It's usually quite messy because the kids have all their stuff everywhere. So label things, because they do. So and cabins are crazy. This restroom that's in the middle of this room, is this also where they'll be showering at? Yeah, so the restroom in the middle is where they'll shower at. There's, I think, I'm trying to remember, I think there's like three sinks to wash hands in three toilet stalls, which are private. And then there's, I think, three showers. And the showers have like a curtain that goes across um, and there's a bench and stuff. And so we were talking about, you know, you can change your clothes inside the shower once you're done showering. So should you be bringing flip-flops for- Yeah, well. yeah. If you want to bring shower shoes for sure, um, shower shoes. And I was telling the kids, I didn't get to it with the afternoon class this morning today, but I got it through it with the morning class. It's really important because you're living in a small state space that you are using good like sanitation skills, like or like procedures, like wash your hands, soap and water, like wash them for 30 seconds. Do not share towels with friends. Like your towel is your towel. You dry your hands on your towel and no one else's towel. Um, you are making sure that like whenever you go to eat, you're sanitizing just because it is a small environment. And when one kid gets sick, it does spread. And so we want to make sure that everyone is healthy. Okay, so we suggest bathroom sandals. Do they need a shower caddy and towels? They need a towel, but they need a towel. I don't know about a shower caddy. caddy. I would say bring like a like a little bag that has yeah. like your shampoo like a, and soap in a it. A gallon bag. A zip a zip bag. Yeah, with everything in it. Yeah. But you don't have enough room, I think, to pack a shower caddy. You better pack your towel and then your toiletries. But a caddy would probably take too much space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, do you chaperones share with the rest of the cabin? Do they share? Like, I think the showers and. Okay. So, okay. So chaperones will not shower, uh, with the students present or anything. They usually will break off during the day when the cabins are not, there's no students inside. Um, and then they can take care of a shower and whatnot, um, and use the restroom and those kinds of things. So, um, and that's something that the slide park principal will go over. Um, and the other thing too is just for safety, students should always be in groups of two whenever they're with any adults at Sly Park. So that's why they have a partner. Their partner should always be with them when they're going with a, some another adult someplace. So always being in groups of two with another adult on campus. Yeah. Do you just like change the bathroom stalls or is it like a specific change in room? Okay, so that is going to be kind of up to you. So you can change because you're going to middle school next year and you're going to be changing in locker rooms. So being able to change in front of other people is something that is going to start coming into your life. But I do not, I don't not blame you. Sometimes we can be very embarrassed about things. And so you can go into the toilet stalls and just change there. They don't really have a changing room for you though. Okay. But you can do it in the cabin? A hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You can go to the cabin and change, or you can go to the stalls and change. It's whatever you're comfortable with. A hundred percent. And we did tell the kids you need to wear pajamas to bed. So if you're like an underwear sleeper, please bring shorts and a t-shirt. Everyone needs to have clothing on. Just things that, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, you're funny. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes kids don't sleep. In, I don't know. No, I've Wear been, pajamas. I've been told by some of our students that I'm like, I don't need to know that information. Okay. Any other questions? Um, for the chef, I think Ella asked this before, but um, 
What's the preference as far as riding on the bus versus driving on cars? Okay, so um, it's up to you. So we do have some spaces to park up there and they encourage carpooling. Um, so if chaperones wanted to carpool, that's fantastic. But if you need your own car because you're like, you know, some people just need their own space, that's fine too. And then um, we love it when people ride on the bus with us because we it's more more hands for us, more eyes for us. So um, riding on the bus is great too. Um, so we're going to have a chaperone meeting when we come back from spring break just to kind of go over uh, the guidelines and then also making sure that if we're trying to figure out who the chaperones are, we can all meet each other um, and carpool and that kind of stuff. And I'll release the names of the chaperones as we get closer. I just need to make sure I have a couple more clearances before I um, have the go ahead to send them all their names out. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So as we are like get closer, if you guys are like have a question pops up, you can dojo us. Mm -hmm. If um yeah, if your student has a question, they can dojo us. They can we have like a little question box here. They can put anonymous questions in and drop them in. So any yeah, just keep asking them because they'll come up as you start packing and that kind of stuff. Packing lists were sent home with permission slips. Um, I will send out the, the packing list again on Dojo so you guys have it. Um, spring break is a great time to kind of start gathering your things for camp. Oh, the other one was children do have to take a shower when they're there. <laughs> um, just for san so. sanitary, like they just need to be clean. Like, you know, brush your teeth is important. So we're going to talk about that. Um, but they do need to make sure. And if they're like, there's they set up shower times, the chaperones will do it. So they take showers throughout the entire kind of day. Whenever there's a break, they have an opportunity to sign up for a shower. So the kids are pretty scattered on when they take their showers, mm -hmm. but they do need to make sure that they are clean because they are sweating and going on a huge hike yeah, and yeah. they're building things in the forest and you need Cleaning. to make sure that you're like hygiene. We just had hygiene. a, we had a, um, everyone should be wearing deodorant talk. <laughs> yes, deodorant's good. I have a quick question yeah. about the medication. Like if they take allergy medicine and then we want them to be able to get Tylenol, can it all be on the same form? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you just give me whatever they can take okay. in a Ziploc bag, whatever with their name on it, original bottle. I'll have bags and all that kind of stuff that morning. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, Zoom? Okay, I'm gonna stop recording. If I could figure that out.